And we now welcome in our first guest of the day. His name is Lee Kamard. He has a new job title, but he's still at BYU. Yeah. Now working with Jeff Judkins and the women's basketball team. Lee, it's been an interesting offseason for you. <laughs> How would you sum up the last few months? You know, I wouldn't wish unemployment on anybody. Um, the the kind of the transition and kind of figuring out what's next was is, is a tough deal, but it, it's been good, and I'm happy. I'm excited. It's a great opportunity. I'm grateful for the coach Judkins, and happy to be with you guys again. So in the end, you moved down the hallway. You just moved <laughs> north, right? You know, my, my my office looks exactly the same. And it's uh, it's closer to my car that I park. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so when... Describe to us the interaction there, because we think of them as two separate teams. Yet uh, they practice and have offices in the same building. They share the same gym, although one team's on the road, one team's at home. There's kind of this interaction between those two teams, anyways, a lot, right? There, there is, and I'm gonna have to try to distance my not distance myself because I, I want those guys to do well and be well, but. They have their program, we have ours, and I'm going to try not to take some of the snacks that the, the players on the men's team get. So, <laughs> Why did you feel like you wanted to work with BYU women's basketball, and specifically with Jeff Judkins? You know, I love the game. I love this university, and I look at it as a great opportunity to learn from him. And if anything else, a few Majera stories are going to be all worth it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> One Majera story is worth it, worth right? it. Like, let alone a few. Worth it. Um, th there's, there's this stigma, and I'm not even sure it's true, but okay, if you work in the women's game, it may be harder to get a job on the men's side. But it feels like Jeff Judkins has perhaps turned down a few of these. That opportunity still might be there. Should that be what you want? I guess, how do you feel about that part of this? M my intention here is to, to add value to these girls any way that I can, help Judkins win games, um, protect him any way I can, and, and just help build this program. The first thing that Coach Judkins said to me was that, Lee, you're going to love this, and you won't go back to the men's side. And he said it won't be because you can't. He said it will be because you don't want to. Hmm. So I'm looking forward to it. It's been a good two weeks. I know it just officially got announced, but I've been here and working with the ladies on the team, and, and they've embraced me, and, you know, they're, they're – they like to have fun, and it's a good time. You take over a spot on a team that just went to the second round of the NCAA tournament is maybe a top 25 team when the season begins. Who knows, based on what they did late in the season, but certainly they'll be receiving some votes. Uh, what are your expectations for yourself and for this team in year number one for you as an assistant coach? It goes back to just adding value, right? Any way that I can, if they want to get extra work in, helping with their skill development, obviously during the year with game planning and game prep practices. Um, I, I, I just, and it's the thing I told them the first day when Jetty introduced me to the, to, the, to the girls, but there's enough here for everybody. If everybody will just buy in, we can do great things. And it's kind of a recipe for good things on any team that you're a part of, just buy in and good things happen. It's an interesting um, group because you return a lot of the players, the Splash Sisters, as we like to call them, a dynamic group in the backcourt, right? Yet the coaching staff, uh, there are two new assistants. We talked to Melanie Day. She's amazing. On Friday, Ray Stewart's still there, and, of course, Jeff Judkins. So how do you uh, start to create that chemistry among the staff, which is really important? It is a big, big deal, and, you know, I spent the week recruiting with Ray out in Indiana, and so it was good to just spend time with him and, discuss kind of the pros and cons of of how we do things and 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 get an idea of what can be improved and and, and all that i'm going to recruit next week with judkins so there'll be some one-on-one -on -one time as far as uh what he feels like we can do better and and just i'm all in you know that's where you asked for the majora <laughs> stories right exactly on the road. we're gonna have a lot of time car, a yeah. lot of time to talk majoris now, all of these assistant coaches come with specific responsibilities. So I know it's only been a few weeks for you, but what specific responsibilities do you have that maybe some of the other assistants do not have? That hasn't been clearly defined yet. Uh, um, I've kind of taken upon me to just try to get in the gym as much as I can with them while we're here, you know, if we're not out recruiting to spend some time. We are limited per NCAA rules, so that's difficult to navigate. But um, just, you know, getting to know them, uh, getting them to trust you and let them know that you're here to just help them become a better teammate, become a better player, and, and, and help them any way I can.
I'm sort of surprised that Jeff hired you in that you're a threat to him as the best shooter, perhaps on the staff. How do you feel about that? that so that is one thing Ray told me. He said, Lee, if there's ever a shooting competition, just know you're not the best shooter in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> that title goes to Coach Judkins, and that's fine. You know, that's fine. It's, it's pretty awesome, too, because – I, I'm not sure that BYU fans understand how good of a player he was at Utah. Yeah. Like all-league performer, NBA guy. He was incredible. He, he was a great player, and uh, you have the Majera stories, but he was telling a story the other day of where he was playing against Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and it's like, oh, my gosh. Like, you were in the league at that time? Like, that's awesome. So there's going to be stories from that point in his life as well. All right, I'm going to say a few names of – the girls on this roster, and I just want you to tell me what comes to your mind, okay? <laughs> just some words that come to mind. Okay. First of all, we'll start with Shaylee Gonzalez. Ultra-talented, great player. Uh, I met her parents uh, a week and a half ago. I can tell why she wants to be who she wants to be. That She wants to be special, and she's got a chance. She's got a real chance. Okay. Ar Arizona connection too, right? Definitely. So she went to high school. I went to elementary school that was right across the street growing nice. up. There's so. that connection. Okay, Paisley Johnson. Feisty competitor. Um, she's a great player, great competitor, great leader, and, and I'm here to help her any way I can. Sarah Hampson. Long, um, really impacts the game with her length. Great teammate and is really going to help us this year. Okay, and finally, Brenna Chase. Deep range. <laughs> she likes a three ball. Um, and she has a really quick release, going to be a big part of, uh, of the team this year. Okay, you seem to have figured some things out already. Sure. I've I, I got a few practices in. So. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, what skill set do you feel like you bring to this staff that will help this team this season? You know, I'm still figuring that out. Uh, I think that skill development will be part of it. Um, but just a, a camaraderie uh, of, of being all in, being with the team, that's kind of – who I like to be, and I hope to just fit in. What did you do, or I should say, when did you find out, and what was the conversation like with Jeff Judkins when he told you that you had the job? Well, he, he was down in, I think he came to the marina, but he was at Lake Powell when I finally found out. But it's at BYU, you guys know, it's a long process. And even though I was already here working, it's still part of it. And so he called me, and I was excited. And I, I believe he was on the marina at, at Wall Weep down at, at Lake Powell and said, hey, you know, I want to offer you the job. And I said, hey, let's go, you know. So You accepted on the spot? I did. No negotiating no. the salary. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, we don't need to get into that. <laughs> um, is is Lizzie's lawn care still a thing that's going to it, happen? It's going to happen eventually. I got a few other things that, you know, my entrepreneur spirit in me mm -hmm. is, is, has been thinking on. But okay. – but, that's all on the back burner, and I'm focused on helping these girls and this team. Now, it's probably got to be in Utah, right? It's not going to fly in Arizona. There's just no need? Yeah, well, while I'm here, yeah. I don't want to be a long-distance owner of a company, you know, so. Well, then you don't have to meddle <laughs> in the details as much, right? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> What's the best bit of advice you've received from Coach Judkins thus far? You know, he, I really appreciate how, how just straight up he was throughout the process. You know, that first – phone conversation that we had and he just said hey I think you'd be really great I think you would really enjoy this um I know it's different but I I kind of went through it as well and and I haven't looked back it's been a great experience and 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 so for him just just how honest he's been with me I, I really appreciate it the college uh, basketball three-point line is going to have a men's distance and now a different women's distance so there's going to be two lines on the courts I can't stand that. It's just so <laughs> annoying, right? Because players will step up to the deepest line typically. I guess, is that a, uh, I assume the lines are down in the annex right now too, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, how, how will that affect the game knowing, okay, that other line is there, but the women don't play to that line. They play to the closer line, which is good for this group. Yeah. So I'm not a fan, if I'm honest. I, I wish they would just have one line because they do tend to play behind whatever is the furthest line. And our girls are capable. Just let's move it back. And I, I feel, I believe I had a conversation with Coach about it, but he feels the same way, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, we have some girls that it's not going to bother them, whether they're behind the further line or the closer line. I'm the type that I like to tell the line no matter where it is. I don't have the range like the new age kid. But uh, I, I wish they would just make one line.
What's the biggest fundamental difference between coaching men's basketball and women's basketball that you've picked up on? Uh, they have they have a more and uh, they're they're. I don't know, because uh, the guys have a good time too, but they like to have a really good time. They're always joking around and, and having fun. And it's weird because they get on the court and it's like, wow, you guys don't like each other. But then you stop practice or you stop the workout and they're right back to being best friends. Where I think guys hold it in a little bit more and it takes a little bit longer to, you know, turn it back on. And so, but, but they, have a, they have a really good time. Does the ball move a little more? Is there is there like an X's and O's difference to you uh, as well in men and women's uh, basketball? I'm still figuring that out. Mm -hmm. Still figuring it out. Just remember four quarters, okay, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> that actually I really like. I like that you can advance it. There's some strategy and all yeah. of that. I, I really like that and should be a good learning thing for me. Yeah, for some reason, it's been the NIT and men's. They'll experiment and then say yes yeah. or no. But the women's game has things that I think the men's game should have, absolutely. The, the, the foul re recount yeah. of the, that starts it's, it's over NBA, every quarter it's, five. Yeah. it's a double bonus no i like that one, as right? well yeah. but the strategy in it really intrigues me great to have you back man thanks guys <laughs> it's like you never left <laughs> but is. for you you did feel like maybe you were leaving but yeah, yeah. it's it's so it's great to have you. no when, when i heard i was thrilled for you yeah i'm so. excited and and like you guys have talked about we have a chance to do something good and and hopefully it can work out that way. Don't worry. We will overhype yeah. this team into <laughs> tremendous pressure. Just work yeah. on you your guys, Jack Jenkins. Uh, you guys are great at the overhyping. <laughs> just work on your Jack Jenkins impersonation, okay? okay? <laughs> you know, you, I'm, I'm going to just say one thing right now, okay? okay. okay. I love the guy. He's going to say my name wrong. Yes. Oh, it's a no question. He's going to get my name wrong, and I'm okay with it. Yeah. I've been getting my name said the wrong way forever. Usually it's Cummard, but he, he likes to say Kennard. And so <laughs> Kennard, Luke Kennard. He's going to say he, Kennard, yeah. and, and that's just how it is. Oh, my you know? gosh. It, it's a head coaching thing that when you become a head coach, you can't pronounce names correctly. The guy's had unbelievable success, and I'm here to help him have even more success, <laughs> but I know he's going to botch my name. It's good. That's good that you know uh, that. Thanks for having Thanks me, guys. Yeah. There you go. There. Thanks, Kennard. There you go. Thanks, Luke Kennard. I appreciate, appreciate it, guys. It. Thanks for having me.